Hi, my name's Dave Krishak, and doggone it, I love gluten. What we're going to do is after we round these dough balls, these dough balls will be retarded or refrigerated overnight. We're going to put them in a dough tub. In this size dough tub, that's about the, the capacity. Leave a little room in between, then cover it. Just to ensure that they stay nice and moist in the retarder. The big problem some people do is they may do four or five tubs, and then they stack them all on top of each other. It doesn't have enough time to cool down. So what I suggest is spread them out in the retarder because you want them to chill down just as fast as possible. Okay, so just to give you a little comparison on the dough balls and how their elasticity and extensibility changes over time. This is one that we rounded just about 15 minutes ago. And it, it's warmed up considerably. You can start to see some gas bubbles in it just from it being on the bench. That while it does have some elasticity, it's gonna quickly tear a little bit, all right? So now we had another one that we made earlier, but this one has had about four or five hours of, of uh, relaxation time covered in the tub and much colder. And I'm able to actually really pull the gluten film on this one that you can almost read green craft through. And then to compare that to the third one, now this is a dough ball that's at about 45 degrees. This is one that was made yesterday, so it's had about 16 hours of fermentation time in the retarder. Because it's had the 16 hours of fermentation time, look at the gluten film, I can pull this now. If I was going to retard these doughs longer, then I definitely would want to use a high protein flour like the power flour. Why? Because of that biomechanical uh, fermentation that occurs, this requires a little bit stronger flour. But look at the gluten film I can pull on this. This dough is just incredibly extensible. 